alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Uh, so you, you have the second book right there, right, Vila? Yep. I yeah, have the so first yeah. one, but I, I donated it. Bring to it to the friend. center a bit. Bring it to the center. Yeah. When hearing becomes listening. Um, this is the my second book on prophetic, uh, basically prophetic connections. Um, and so what we're talking about is this. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start from this from the beginning. Um the, the Prophet وسلم, brought an immense change to the people he interacted with. But the only way he was able to bring that change into their lives is that he established a beautiful connection with people. Um, he wasn't detached from people. He was connected to people. And so, you know, my research led me down this role of emotional intelligence because I wanted to study how he connected to people in such an impactful way and how that intelligence was something given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he could pass on the message. And that's something that I wrote about in my first book, uh, When Hearing Becomes Listening. Uh, I'm sorry, my first book, With the Heart in Mind. So it's all about, let's look at the Prophet Sallallahu differently. Let's look at him not as just someone who came to bring a message, but someone who was the message. Mm -hmm. And part of what the message of him was, was study how I connect to people. Study how I make people feel loved. Study how I make people feel important, right? And so when you look at that, you, you, you realize that there's this man who's connected to Allah, who's, who's, who's focused on the akhirah. But as I said before, everyone close to him felt loved. And it's a struggle. I'm going to keep, we have to keep it 100. We have to be real. It is not easy to give yourself so much to people uh, in, in a way that they feel that, you know they're present, you're th that you're there for them. But his style was at that high level where if the, the hadith is in Shemaim, if you were in his presence, you felt as if you were the most important person. And one of the hadith that I begin with is the hadith of Abdullah bin Amr. It's a well-known hadith where he walks into the masjid and he asks the Prophet, so said, who do you love the most? And he says, Aisha. Now the key, the beautiful part of that hadith is that he actually thought it was him. So, so can we reach a level where the people that we want to feel that we love them more than anyone else, that we love them more than anyone else, um, even though it may not be the case. And that's something I wrote about in the second book, which is, you know, it was okay that he actually loved Aisha more than this man. But the perception that the man had is that he was the most beloved to him. Now, when you press them and he actually asked, he was like, well, I have to keep it real with you. But until you ask, the impression that I'm going to give you is that you are the most beloved person, right? So my first book, we talk a lot about, you know, that emotional intelligence. And I just wanted people to restructure what they consider sunnah. Yes, there's outward sunnahs. Yes, there's sunnahs of ibadah. But I think that the greatest sunnah is the sunnah of connection. It is the sunnah that is missing in our family. It is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, ro you know, rolling around in the masjid with his grandchildren, making them feel loved because a child that develops a secure attachment is able to connect to Allah in a deep and meaningful way when they grow up. You feel what I'm, you, you see what I'm trying to say? Like, like, and, and so I'll give an example. The second book, the second book is called When Hearing Becomes Listening, because a lot of people were asking me, well, how do I build my emotional intelligence? And, and, and I was like, well, you have to become a better listener. And I'll be real, Bilal, I'm struggling with all this stuff myself, yo. So like this is a journey of a lifetime to to emulate him and to become a better listener. But let me give an example. Um, there was a there was a young man who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, I want everyone to picture this moment. This man comes, this young man, 20 years old or something, he comes up to the Prophet Sallallahu and he says, Ya Rasulullah, my father is trying to take my money from me. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu he's a, he's like a judge too. He's not just a counselor. He's like a judge. So he goes, okay, bring your, bring your father. When the man leaves, the angel Gabriel comes down. The, the angel Gabriel comes down and he says to uh, the Prophet Sallallahu when the man comes, ask him to tell you the poem that he was saying in his heart. And Gabriel leaves. The man arrives with his father. 
trailing behind him. Now imagine what the father is feeling. You're bringing me in front of, of Rasulullah Sallallahu Like you're bringing me in front of the prophet for this issue. Can you imagine the, the shame he felt for a moment, right? So the young man starts to speak and he says, uh, the prophet says, hold on. Before you say anything, Sir, can you please tell me the couplets that you are reciting in your heart while you were coming here? The father is, is awed. He's in shock, mesmerized by the prophetic uh, knowledge of what's in his heart. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, you never cease to amaze us. How come you heard something my own ears didn't hear? And I want to stop here because... A lot of people, I said, we don't need more lawyers. We need more listeners. We don't need more lawyers, y'all. We need more listeners. This man had pain inside, but pain that his own mouth had not articulated yet. And the prophet taught me and you in this moment that we don't need a law case right now. We need a listening case right now. Now, the beautiful part is some people have trauma, difficulty, that they themselves have not been able to articulate yet. Why? Because nobody said to them, tell me about it. And I'm going to speak to the brothers, yo. There's a drought of brothers that will listen to one another. We, we don't have it because we don't have vulnerability. We'll watch the game together. You know, we'll, we'll sit there and, and hoop together. But if one of your bros was like, yo, I need to talk to you about something that my heart is feeling. We'd be like, all right, yo, yo, text me later, bro. I, we'll see what's up. <laughs> like, the vulnerability is not there. And I'm going to come back. Bilal, remind me about that vulnerability. I want to come back to that. So um, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi taught this man how to have space to express what his heart was feeling, that would have stayed bottled up. And it's not supposed to stay bottled up. Emotions are meant to be, are meant to be expressed because they make us human. They're not meant to be just kept inside. The emotion is what the human experience is about. So Bilal, the Prophet Sallallahu says these words and they echo in the, in, the, in the annuals of history. The Prophet said these words. He said, قُلْ وَأَنَا أَسْمَعُ Speak and I'll listen to you. That's it. That's it. Like, that's the end of the book right there, y'all. Like, learn how to say those words to people. Talk, go ahead. I'll listen to you. Have you ever, Bilal, you ever been talking to somebody and, 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 and while you're talking, you go, you know, now that I say it, now that I say it, meaning all you really needed was someone that would pull out those meanings from within you. That's what you truly needed. And, and I've had, I got, I got, I got, I got an ace, man. I got a bro that I call up talking to him yesterday. Sometimes he'll say something, but sometimes he'll just sit there and just, oh, you figured it out. Okay, cool. So now let's talk tomorrow. So let's go forward with the story. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he listens to this man's poetry. And the whole poem was just about how hurt he was by what his father was do, what his son was doing to him. And uh, it's a beautiful poem. It's a historic poem. It, it, it's unparalleled in passion and sadness and eloquence. And at the end of it, he says about his son, it was my hope that if you didn't give me the love of a father, that you would at least give me the love of a neighbor. And when he was done, the prophet was in tears. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, looked at that young boy and he said, Qum, idhab fa'anta wa maluka li abika. Stand up, get out of here. You and all your wealth belong to your father. Now, hold on, time out. There's no ruling here. This isn't a legal verdict. There's no Muslim scholar that will ever tell you a father owns the wealth of the child. No. Because it's not a legal case. It's a listening case. He taught the young man that he needed to listen. That right there 
If I could share one story from my book, it's that right there. The Prophet did two things there, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He taught us that some people have pain inside that hasn't been voiced yet. And you can help them voice it. And he taught us that you can solve many problems by getting the parties to listen to one another. And, and, and so I was saying that vulnerability is another issue because when, when we talk about listening versus hearing, it's about going to what's not the words, but the meaning and not even the meaning, but the feeling. I'm going to say that again, Bilal, because you didn't nod enough. You ain't feel me on that. Words are forms of feelings. And sometimes our words don't match our feelings quite yet. As a child, we, we feel before we can speak because the limbic part of our brain develops before the, the, the neocortex develops. In our whole life, it's as if we're playing catch up, trying to explain how we feel. So a true listener is someone who goes beyond the words and gets to the meaning and beyond meaning to feeling. What's felt, what the person is saying. So the next time, you know, someone you care about says, uh, uh, I'm okay, I'm good. You hear what they feel, not what they say. Vulnerability. The One of the lines that this, this, this whole thing is talking about um, was uh, the prof that 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 prophecy began with a hug? Listen, human connection. This is I don't have time to speak about it. It's all in the second book, but we have a respiratory system, right? We have a cardiovascular system, right? We have a a, a, a nervous system, right? The, the work of Mary Ainsworth and John Bowlby shows us that we have an attachment system inside of us as well. And what that basically means is that each and every one of us is seeking attachment, seeking connection to another, uh, to another person. And the reason it's another person is because animals, when they're scared, they seek protection and shelter. People, when they're scared, they seek protection in people. And that is why our beloved ran out of a cave to a woman's arms. He ran out of a cave into a woman's arms. And as she held him, he said, vulnerably, I got this figured out. Don't worry. Give me space. No. He ran and said, ala nafsi. I'm scared. I don't know what's happening. Vulnerability. 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 Right? Um, and so he runs to her because we all run to people because that's our attachment system inside. And the beautiful thing, Bilal, is that the attachments that we form, if they're strong, they'll always be a source of protection for us even when the person themselves are, is absent. Let me break it down. Let me break it down. A child at a playground, four years old, five years old, you know, ch uh, the parent is, <laughs> uh, I was looking at the comments, uh, unfortunately, just getting caught in the comments there. Um, a child at a playground, y'all, every now and then they look back at the parent to make sure the parent is present and emotionally invested. And I know for some listeners, it's going to hurt, but we got to go where the pain is. Every now and then the, the, the parent looks back, the child looks back to confirm the, the presence, not physical, emotional presence, emotional investment. Now, as the child learns that the parent is present, then they get more courageous to go further out and explore because they know there's always someone they can run back to when there's trouble. Well, the, 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 the attachment theory teaches us that that never stops in life, that we always go back to the people that we see as secure figures. Now, I'm going to bring it home for y'all. This is, this is deep. Listen to this. The Joseph 
Prophet السلام, Yusuf, he went through a big fitna when he was seduced by Zulaikha. And he was a human being, so the Quran says, وَهَمَّ You know, he was a human being, so he, he it crossed his mind. He wasn't a stoic, he wasn't a robot, he wasn't an angel, he was a human being. And so the Quran says he thought about it and she thought about it. But he saw a sign. The Quran says he saw Burhana Rabbi, a sign from God. Now, now, hold up, let's pause. A sign from God? Was it did he see it like a lightning bolt in the window or something? Like did he see an angel behind Zuleika? Like, nah, bro, chill. Like a sign from God, it had to be big. Do you know what Ibn Abbas says he saw? His father. But is there anyone in this room that can doubt how much Yaqub emotionally invested in Joseph? You want to protect your children from fitna? Show them love right now. You worried about how they're going to act in college. <laughs> Yaqub taught you, show them love right now. You'll be there for them even when you're not physically there. Because you were so present when you were there that when you're physically present, you're still there. Bilal, you feel what I'm trying to say? Like you're so present when you're there that when your physical presence is absent, your emotional tawajjuh, as we call it, is still there. And this is why I'm, I'm, I'm trying to highlight the importance of us becoming better listeners and connected to people. We're in this weird age of online Islam. It's just cutthroat. It's so vile. It's so vicious. And no one wants to listen to anyone anymore. I don't dialogue online for this reason. It's not an avenue for deep conversation and deep understanding. Right? We need face to face. I need to see you nod. I need to see your eyes. Because that is where communication happens. So I'm gonna, I don't know how much time I have, but the Rasul Sallam revelation began in the arms of a woman being held and he died in the arms of a woman being held. Don't tell me I don't need no one but God. Don't say that. Because I'm gonna bring the Prophet Sunnah in front of you and show, tell you this man right here was connected to people until the last moment. And, and here's the deal. Oh my goodness. Have you ever taken a kid and dropped them off at kindergarten? Transitions are when you need people the most. And when the prophet was transitioning into Nubuwa, he had Khadija. And when he was transitioning into Akhira, he had Aisha. I, I don't know what else to say, but it's crazy. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. SubhanAllah. You know, it, it, it's incredible, you know, today in the khutbah, I was reflecting on, you know, how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi he could have just sat there and looked at the wall, like, I just, like, what just happened when he receives Iqra? He could have ran to Abu Bakr. But the sakina and the rahma that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions that the spouses were created for, Ooh. he brings it into the home. He doesn't, mm. you know, many times we, when we, when we talk and we want to be heard, we talk with people that really like our coworkers, our colleagues and all of that. But Rasulullah Sassam brings it into the home, that communication. Yes. SubhanAllah. Yep. May Allah accept, man. I mean, I wrote, a, there's a lot of material on this that I've, I've made it my life to study and talk about. So um, what I tried to share right now is just, if there's a takeaway, if there's a takeaway, I know people, they, they need takeaways, right? So listen, here's my takeaway for everyone, okay? If you want to become a better listener, you need to learn how to listen to yourself first. Because the noises inside of you distort the messages that come to you. Did y'all hear what I said? The noise inside of you distorts the messages that come to you. Everyone around you ain't angry. You're angry. It's, it's in you. So uh, you, 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 gotta, you, you, gotta, you gotta work on yourself. Um, you have to learn to listen to yourself. You need to journal. You need to write. Allah says you learn by the pen. 
I think you can learn about yourself through the pen as well. When you start to voice what you feel inside, what you're feeling, why you're feeling. Um, analyze yourself deeply. Understand who you are and where you came from and why you feel what you feel in a given moment. And that will help you recognize the filters that distort the messages that come to you. That's one advice I can give, inshallah. Mashallah, you, you said something incredible, that, uh, many things incredible, mashallah. Uh, re, you just said, though, you know, this concept that you have to listen to yourself, you know. Uh, Muhammad al-Sharif, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. I remember one of his classes uh, about dua. He mentioned something, and this kind of relates to the first um, the, the, the the first reflection about gratitude. And we got to get that on a shirt. Entitlement and gratitude don't mix like oil and water. Mm -hmm. Get that on mm -hmm. a shirt. Um, but he, he mentioned, he said that, Allah wants us to turn to Him. So if we only turn to Allah in moments of difficulty, Allah will continuously give us those moments. Mm. But if you turn to Allah in moments of ease, Allah will continue to give you Allah. moments of ease. When you Allah. think of Ayyub, salam, he was sick to the point where the only thing that worked was his tongue and his heart, and he used it to praise Allah. <laughs> and when he's when he when his wife is like, why don't you just make du'a? He's like, for, for what? He's like, he, 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 he was... <laughs> He, the gratitude, he zoomed in all the way. And when, when we get hardships, that's what we zoom in all the way. Mm. Ayub is like, I've only been sick for seven years. What you know? What do I have to complain? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Allah. 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 It's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right. I know we're supposed to have a Q&A. &A. Yep. Um, let, let's keep the questions light, inshallah. I know what I've talked about is really deep. Um, and so there's a lot of there's a lot of pain out there, mm. like that father who was brought before the the, the Prophet So I'll try my best to answer questions based on the topic, uh, but I, I can't in this case. You know, I'll tell you this. I'm gonna I'm gonna preemptively drop like 50 of the questions right now. You ready? What's my left? You can't force somebody to become a better listener. Mm. They have to desire to become a better listener. 50% of the questions are about to drop because a lot of us want to know how can we make someone else a better listener? What you can do is model it. Hmm. What you can do is model it. What you can do, and it's not a shameless plug, buy the book and read it together. See, changes in the house. We always do this. One spouse reads something, goes crazy. You know what I mean? Other spouse, like, uh, I didn't get the memo that we were t t becoming all pious this week, right? Like I didn't get the memo that we're changing up. Like, no, you have to change together. Another thing I'll suggest, sometimes we have older parents that don't communicate love properly. And so what I've explained to people is dealing with older people, we have to learn how to read love, hear what we need to hear from them. I don't say this to everyone, but specifically with elders, who are, it's really hard for them to change. We know neuroplasticity is gets tough, 60, 70, 80, right? So sometimes your father never says he loves you, but he says, chai lao, jibli chai. You know, beta chai lao, right? You understand Urdu, yo? Bila? You look like you understand. My, 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 my uh, no, Arabic. Urdu a little bit. Okay, okay. Gigi tiki. Tiki. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So Ghibli Shai, your dad says, you know, bring me chai. Maybe that's how he can communicates to you love and connection, right? So now with other people that we're living with, uh, we have to discuss these things. We have to talk about what it is that we we need from them and be clear with that. I'm I, I'm currently doing a um, there's a course on this that I'm doing with another organization. It's funny you mentioned Muhammad Sharif. That's so ironic because um, I'm doing a course with one of his organizations uh, on this topic. So I teach it in detail. But preemptively, I'm going to say this. You can't make someone become a better listener. You can help to inspire them to want to become a better listener. And that's why I wrote these books, because I wanted people to see it as a religious duty. I wanted people to not see it as some new age psychology stuff, but 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 also as the, um, I'm going to say Muhammad, as a religious thing. No, this is who we are as Muslims. So let's take a few of the questions, inshallah, to Ali, if we can. Inshallah. Uh, when it comes to, so this one you, you answered the, in terms of like fostering a safe environment. Um, 
or you, you kind of touched upon it. How does a woman foster a safe environment for her husband to feel safe emotionally and be vulnerable? And you, you kind of mentioned by by example for that. You know, so so the reason why these are hard to answer, I'm gonna be straight up, Bilal. Listen, culture, your your audience is global, right? And and it's I'm an American in Dallas, Texas. You know what I mean? Like I can't speak to your culture's norms of family dynamics. It's almost impossible for me to do that. Um, you know, so as an American Muslim, I'm given this type of advice. And, and I, I know what it's like here in Dallas, Muslim families, right? Um, and so I can give an advice to that. But it's very hard to give that type of advice in a global audience because the orf, the orf is so different across everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so, so again, I think you can open dialogue, but it depends on the culture because I, I, the prophet was fighting a masculine culture that did not feel the need to show vulnerability and connect to people. He fought against that. Unfortunately, those still exist today. He literally had to teach men how to feel again. Literally. A man came and said, I never kissed 10 of my sons. The prophet's like, that's not a flex. That's not a flex. That's not cool. You're not, you're not cool, bro. <laughs> Is it my fault that God snatched snatch mercy out of your heart? That's not cool. So what I'm trying to say is when it comes to the family uh, dynamics, the cultures matter a lot in that dis discussion. So it'll be hard for me to answer those questions right now. Definitely. 100% agree. And, you know, uh, my father, he's he's from uh, he's from Lebanon. So I remember for him, his his love language is is service. Right. Allahu Akbar. And um, he would work all nights at Ford and and he never really said to like, here's a hug or I love you or I appreciate you or anything mm. like that. So I, you know, I wanted that. And that's my love language is, is, is words of affirmations. It took about seven years through modeling like you mentioned for me to t for for me to hear my father say i love you allahu akbar it took eight years for him to say i love you more allahu akbar <laughs> so that is lot. beautiful what you just shared everyone in the ga gathering needed to hear that you know i was at a i was in california and i was giving this talk because i do this talk all over the place and and a father a daisy father stood up and he said oh that sounds great but our people don't do that, you know? And I said, uh, is, do you have a son? He says, yes. Is he here? And his son was right in the front stuff, 16 year old. I was like, stand up. The son stood up. I was like, uh, be honest. Would you like a hug from your father? And he just nodded. Allah. And I said, please, right now, go back and hug him. Allah. He walked in the back. He hugged him. I kid you for a, a minute and a half straight. They held each other. Allah. But then I told him, I said, you're going to have to do this for seven to eight days straight. By the ninth day, your father's going to be missing the hug. And he'll say, Where's, where are you? Where, I didn't get my hug today. Allah. He, why is it so important? Because emotional detachment is transgenerational. Hmm. We pass on insecure attachments. It's a long discussion, Bilal. It's such a beautiful conversation, but... Let's let's answer some more of the questions, inshallah. Bismillah. So we, we got one more question in the chat. Uh, when it comes to dealing and connecting with people, how can we do so without letting it influence our own nafs and journey to betterment? Like if your patience and ability to listen isn't up to par. Yeah, yeah. So you have to establish barrier uh, boundaries. Mm. You have to understand. Uh, keep the question on the thing, if you don't mind. You have to establish boundaries, okay? So, you know, you need to know yourself and know your threshold. OK, you need to know your threshold for emotional investment. But in my book, I also speak about something different, which is you aren't meant to connect to everyone in the world mm. and you won't be questioned for connecting to everyone in this in the world. OK, in my book, I want you to flip through the book real quick. I don't have one near me. You'll see this diagram of like circles that go around each other. You can't miss it. There's only a few diagrams. There's the these circles. The end. Uh, it's not that long of it. It's like 200 page book. Habibi. Um, it's like towards the end, towards the end. Towards the end. Bismillah. Yeah. There's these centric, centric circles that go in, in a circle. Okay. Let me explain it while you find it. You'll find it. I for sure. Inshallah. Um, so here's the deal. We aren't neurologically like social brain theory teaches us that we developed such, we developed over other animals, 
because of the need to connect. Yes. So that's what we need. No, there's one more. There's one more. Not that one. There's one more. You'll find it, Habibi. Barakallah fika. Samihni. I'm so sorry. So basically the idea is a lot of us are trying to connect to too many people. Right. We're, 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 we're in the comments in the Twitter section. We're in the comments here and there. We're, but there's people right around you. Here we go. There we go. OK, hold that for a second. If we can make this bigger, uh, if our if our um, uh, IT team can make that screen bigger, that would be great. So uh, so basically, I need y'all to focus on the inner circles. A lot of us are focusing so much of our energy on the outer circles. We need to focus on the inner circles. That's enough. Thank you. So that to me right there, uh, the reason I brought that up, yo, Bilal, thanks so much. So Bilal, the reason I brought that up, let me explain. We, our, our emotional energy is a finite resource, right? But the problem is, Bilal, if I'm on social media putting all of my energy there, when I get home, I'm going to be exhausted, and I'm going to be like, I, I can't take anymore. I can't take anymore. So one of the things I think we all need to do is we need to tighten that circle up again, right? Yes, we are globally connected, but your brain neurologically is not meant to connect to 20 million people, right? Stop answering weird comments in the comment section. Like, no, you have people around you that need have a right on you. Mm -hmm. Invest in those people, right? Put your emotional energy there. Right. So first thing I'm going to say is you have to set boundaries. Right. You have to set boundaries. Super important by knowing yourself. Right. Knowing your threshold. Turn your phone off. Go for walks at certain time. Have times out of office that you're not accessible. Say no, because every no is a yes to something else. And every yes is a no to something else. Hmm. Every time you say yes to someone, you're saying no to someone else or yourself. And every time you say no to someone, you're actually opening up an opportunity for something else. So us who are people pleasers out there, we need to learn how to put ourselves first, first sometimes. Um, and because if you don't care for yourself, then you won't be able to give your best self to other people. So boundaries, uh, set boundaries. Uh, I, f I forgot the ones I just said, subhanAllah. Boundaries, bring it in, focus on that, and learn how to say no more often. Uh, where you can say no. Subhanallah, Jazakallah Khair. We we are uh, we have a we have we're kind of out of time, but uh, I just want to say how much we appreciate you. Um, Subhanallah, the, the the comments are 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 incredible. Just you know, my twelve year old daughter really enjoyed Sheikh Mita. It looks up. It looks up. It looks up, man. We're um, just trying to do our best here, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, just all the gems that you dropped. We greatly appreciate you. Um, please make sure to you want to put a plug in for your books. No, you you guys shared the link there. You know, um, Alhamdulillah, the book has been. We, I mean, it's, it's, we're trying to start a movement, right? We're trying to start this movement, this movement of Muslims that are better connected to the people around them. That's our objective is, uh, is teaching people how to better connect, inshallah ta'ala. Um, I told you, Bilal, I haven't mastered these things. I saw one comment, you must be a great listener. Nah, man, I'm struggling, man. I'm struggling. You know, we are all striving and struggling. You know, not every khatib that gives a khutbah on tahajit prays every day tahajit. Right. We're striving. We're moving forward. We're trying our best. Um, and so as long as we know what the goal is, though, and that prophetic ideal, inshallah, one day we'll reach it. Inshallah. Inshallah.